Methods. Every method has a name. Most are short and simple. But a few begin and end with double underscores. These are the special methods. Using special methods, you can empower your classes with custom behavior for standard syntax. You can override operators, define iteration, access the inner workings of classes, and much more. But above all, by using special methods, you yourself will be writing special code. So open up your special editor and grab a special beverage, because this special video begins now. Special methods and attributes live inside every class. To demonstrate, create a class called Snowflake with no details whatsoever. We are using Python version 395, so we do not need to subclass object. But if you are still using Python version 2, wipe away your tears and subclass object to create a new style class. Now create a Snowflake object and look inside using the dir function. This list contains some, but not all, of the special methods and attributes that are available to use. Each one starts and ends with double underscores. Throughout this video, I will not pronounce the leading and trailing underscores, because nobody got time for that. These special objects give you an inside look as to how classes operate. For example, the eq special function is called when you compare two objects for equality. The set attr function is short for set attribute, and it is called when you attach an attribute to an object. The dict is a special attribute, not a special function. It is the dictionary which contains all of the object attributes. Let us clarify by looking at some special examples. We will first explore the dict special attribute. First, create an empty class named Martian, and then print the special dictionary attribute. Run. It is currently empty. But suppose we give this Martian a first name, and a last name. If we run again, the special dictionary now contains the first name and last name attributes. That is the purpose of the special dictionary, to store object attributes. Let us now add some code to the Martian class. First, we will add a doc string. Next, we will add a special method called init to initialize a Martian object. Some languages call this a constructor. The first argument is self, and we will add arguments for the Martian's first and last name. Next, assign the first and last names to this instance. These two lines of code will insert the first and last names into the special dictionary. The doc string is not put in the special dictionary. Instead, it is stored in a special attribute called doc. To see this, print the value of the doc special attribute. Run. Moving on, create a Martian object. This Python syntax simply calls the init special method. We will print the special dictionary to see if the first and last names are properly stored there. Run. And they are. The first and last names were added in the init method. But there is nothing to stop us from adding additional attributes. Look what happens if we add an arrival date attribute. Run once more. The arrival date attribute has been properly stored. We will now explore the special methods that Python uses to set and get attributes. When you assign an attribute to an object, the special setAttr method is called with both the name and value of the attribute. For demonstration purposes, we will print a message to let us know when this method was called. Notice that we are using f strings, which were introduced in Python 3.6. If you are using an older version of Python, you will need to construct this message in a different way. Let us create another Martian and run. Notice that the special set attribute method was called twice. This is because in the init method, we assign the first and last names to this instance. Both of these lines are setting an attribute value, so Python calls the set attr method each time. Let us check to see if these values are stored in the special dictionary. They are not. Usually, Python's default set attribute special method stores each attribute in the special dictionary for us. However, 
because we wrote our own set ATTR method, we are now responsible for storing attributes. To ensure the attributes are stored, we just need to add them to the dictionary. Now run. The attributes are now there. Next, let us add our own getATTR special method. This method is called when you try to access an attribute. We will print a simple message to check when this method is called. Next, we will create another Martian. Print the first name, and then print the last name. In each print line, we are getting an attribute. Run. When we created the Martian, the init method was called. And like the previous example, this resulted in two calls to the special set attribute method. But notice that neither of our print commands called the get ATTR method. This is certainly an odd development. But the Python documentation provides a reasonable explanation. Note that if the attribute is found through the normal mechanism, get attribute is not called. This is an intentional asymmetry between get attribute and set attribute. This is done both for efficiency reasons and because otherwise get attribute would have no way to access other attributes of the instance. In other words, if all you need is the value of an attribute, this special method is not called. Instead, Python calls a different special method called getAttribute. Notice this special method does not abbreviate the word attribute. For nearly all cases, the getAttr method will suffice. The getAttr special method is particularly useful for returning computed attributes. For example, let us provide users with the ability to view a Martian's full name. First, check to see if the attribute name is full name. If it is, then construct the full name and return it. Otherwise, raise an attribute error. Print the full name. Then run. We see our getAttr special method was only called once when we asked for the full name. The first two print lines access the first name and last name by calling the getAttribute special method. And finally, let us try to access a non-existent attribute to see if an attribute error is raised. What if we try to access the Martian name? Run. We see that the getAttr special method was called, but since the attribute name was not recognized, an attribute error was indeed raised. Let us remove the line that raised an error and instead display the special dictionary. Run. It still contains only the first and last name. The full name is constructed and returned, but it is never stored in the internal dictionary. A more natural way to generate the full name would be to override the str special method. This method is called when you convert an object to a string. First, let us reduce visual clutter by removing the print line inside the set attribute method. Now create a Martian object and print it. Run. This output is the string generated by a call to the special str method. It displays the object type and the C Python memory address. You can also get this value by explicitly calling the str special method. A useful fact is that each object in Python is assigned a unique integer. You can access its value by calling the id function. Run. The memory address inside the standard string representation is a hexadecimal value, while the id returns a base 10 integer. If you start Python, enter the memory address as a hex value. Then, Python will convert it to a base 10 integer. It is the same as the id value. This is why every object has a unique id value. Python uses the C Python memory address, and two different objects cannot have the same address. Now that we fully understand the default string representation, let us override the str special method. Instead of returning the memory address, we will return the Martian's full name. Again, we are using an F string or formatted string. Now create a Martian and print the object. Run. Well done, us. Special methods can do much more than control attributes. If you visit the online Python documentation for a data model and then click on special method names, you can see how many special methods and attributes are available for you.
Bear is a tremendous number. You can override the six comparison operators. And further down, you can see there are special methods for the four arithmetic operations. Addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. There are even special methods for binary operations like bit shifts, and, or, and XOR. As an example, let us write the code for comparing two Martians. We will compare them by name, and we will say Martian 1 is less than Martian 2 if Martian 1's name would come first alphabetically. To achieve this, we will implement the LT special method. Notice the input to this special method will be another Martian object, which we will call other. When sorting people by name, you first sort by last name, then by first name. If the last names are different, then comparing their last names determines their order. In the case where two Martians have the same last name, then we compare their first names. We do not worry about the case where the first and last names are identical, because we have no other useful data to sort upon. To test our special method, we will construct a list of Martians. Many, many Martians. Once we have created a list of Martians, we call the sort method on the list. And to verify the names are properly ordered, we loop over the list and print each name. Run. They are correctly sorted. And to confirm that our custom less than method is being called, we will print a message indicating when two Martians are being compared. Run. We now see that the less than special method was called quite a few times by the Python sorting algorithm. Congratulations, special viewer. You have made it to the end of our special video on special methods. As your reward, here is an award. A special participation trophy. Hooray.